What's going on, y'all? Today we're going to be going over the seven rules to flounder fishing. I guarantee you if you follow these seven simple rules, you will catch more flounder. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into rule number one, where and when to catch flounder. For me, I'm only going to target flounder in three different types of areas, rocks, docks, and grass. That's it. Okay. And then I'm when I target those flounder in those areas depends solely on the tide. So I'm going to separate my tide into three parts. We got the high tide, the low tide, and then the middle part, right? Whether it be incoming or outgoing, that moving section of tide, right? That's going to be the middle. So I'm going to target my flounder on high tide. I'm going to go to the grass, low tide. I'm going to fish docks and my moving tide, I'm going to fish rocks. If y'all stick to that pattern, you will catch flounder. Rule number two, assume everything is a flounder. If you're sitting there and throwing out and all of a sudden your line comes to a stop, don't assume that you just hit an oyster or a rock or you're hung up in the grass. If you feel like there's the slightest chance that it could be a flounder, make sure that you rear back set the hook, sweep through, and give it everything. Uh, I cannot tell you how many flounder have been lost because we thought it was an oyster and it was just holding weight and we're sitting there reeling it all the way to the boat. And then when we get to the boat, we see it, realize it's a flounder or it starts to swim. When you throw out there and you're jigging back to you, don't assume, oh, that's a crab or a rock or an oyster or anything like that. Set the hook on everything. Even if you think it's a small fish like a trout or a redfish, if you're sitting there flounder fishing, assume everything is a flounder. Rule number three, be thorough and methodical. I could not stress the importance of this enough. You have to be thorough and you have to be methodical. You got these flounder, they're laying in these different areas, right? And you... When you're flounder fishing, you've got to put that lure in front of a flounder's face. And if you're throwing this way and then your next cast, you're throwing that way and then you throw this way. And then all the meanwhile, you're drifting because you're in a boat, a kayak, you're trolling down a bank, whatever the case may be. There's so much water between those areas because you are skipping around that you're missing and the possibility of you rolling over that flounder and not catching them because you are skipping around is high. So we wanna make sure that we're being thorough and we're being methodical. If I'm fishing a grass line, I'm gonna make sure that when I'm going down that grass line, every single cast is a foot off of the grass line. And then once I, I get through with that retrieve, I wanna make sure my next cast goes 10 yards further than the previous cast. So I'm just leaping and bounding down that grass line the entire time. I'm making sure that I'm covering that grass line thoroughly and it's methodical. It's the same way every single time. Uh, same thing if I come to a creek mouth, right? I'm not just gonna go in there and start launching a lure inside a creek mouth. The first thing I'm gonna do is throw through the creek mouth, right? Making sure there's nothing staged up on the outside. Once I cover the outside of the creek mouth, I'm gonna come in and start pieing that creek, that creek mouth, making sure that I'm throwing, you know, a foot apart until I cover the entire portion of that creek mouth. Same thing goes for docks, points, this, that, and the other. You want to make sure that you develop a methodical way to go in and thoroughly cover docks, creek mouths, grass, rock jetties, so on and so forth. The worst thing you can do is jump around and randomly just throw cast out in an area. Rule number four, be sure to target ambush points, okay? Put yourself in that fish's position. The flounder is the ultimate ambush creature. Um, you know, when you're sitting there and you look at a point, right? Now, there, fish can be anywhere on a point, but there's typically that specific part in that, that point or creek mouth where that current pushes around. Maybe there's a current break there's an eddy and there's a natural spot that all the bait typically gets pushed around to. That's going to be where the flounder are going to be at. So if I'm sitting here and I'm looking at a point or a creek mouth or a dock or anything like that, I'm going to put myself in that position and say, okay, 
where's the most likely area right here that a flounder is going to stage up and ambush the the mullet that's coming around this point right um, and typically it's going to be right there in that current break uh, same thing with the creek mouth. If you got tide that's pushing out of a creek mouth, you're going to typically have an eddy that's forming around one side. You might have a patchy uh, spot of grass or something like that right outside your creek mouth. But you want to make sure you're envisioning where a good ambush spot would be. Where do you think the flounder are going to stage up to target the bait in that area? Rule number five, don't be afraid to throw big baits for flounder. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've thrown five and six inch baits and I'm still catching 12, 14 inch flounder. A small flounder will hit a big bait, I promise you. And for me, one of the, the times that I see that big baits really outshine smaller baits is um, in, in situations where you have a lot of bait in the area. So if I got a lot of glass minnows and finger mullet and um, bull minnows and things like that in the area, I want something that's gonna stand out from them, that's not just gonna look like everything else. And, and typically, I'm gonna throw something in there that's that six, five inch bait. Maybe it looks like a bigger pinfish or a bigger croaker, just a bigger meal for those flounder. Um, and, and I feel like a bigger bait is more likely to get bit by a flounder than a smaller bait is. Rule number six, scent is king. I cannot stress enough that make sure you're using baits with scents. Uh, obviously, for years, Gulp has, has kind of owned the, uh, the, the market for being the best flounder lure, and I believe that it probably still does. Uh, you don't have to use Gulp. I use Gulp 90% of the time, but... Uh, if you're using something other than gulp, make sure you're using Procure Scent. You're scenting that bait, you're lathering it up, um, because what happens when, when that flounder bites, you want that flounder to, to taste that scent and really hold down and try to swallow that bait while you're going through the mental preparation to set the hook on that fish, because there's a period in which that flounder bites that you're sitting there, you're throwing your rod tip down and you're deciding, you know, is that a flounder, did he bite? I do it all the time when I'm sitting there and I'm sorting through the thoughts of, there he is, that's a flounder, boom, 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 right? I need that flounder to hold onto that bait while I get ready to reel in my slack and sweep through my hook set. And if you have a bait that has a lot of scent on it, that's going to happen. Last but not least, rule number seven. All right, we're talking about using the right rig for the job. Now, I'm going to post a link to a video right here where I went over several different rigs for flounder fishing. Um, but in a nutshell, using the right rig, right weight for the job. All right, if you're in shallow water like fishing grass during a high tide, you definitely don't want to use overkill on your weight. You don't need more than a quarter ounce to stay on the bottom and to get bit by your flounder. So if you're throwing a 3 8 ounce lure, um, a lot of times you're going to be creating too much of a mud plume or you're just going to have a, a very heavy presentation. It doesn't look very natural. And on the flip side of that spectrum, if you're fishing docks, during a low tide, but you're sitting there fishing, you know, six, seven, eight foot docks, and you only have an eighth or a quarter ounce jig head, you're not going to be anywhere near the strike zone. So maybe you'll need to use a three eighth ounce or something like that. So making sure that you're you're rigged up for the right presentation, um, and and just as a rule of thumb, um, you know, if you're fishing grass lines and marsh you're fine with either an eighth or a quarter you can use either one of those i prefer a quarter because i can get a good long cast on it and i feel like it still keeps a natural presentation uh, but if i'm fishing docks i will never use anything um less than a 3 8 ounce lure or 3 8 ounce jig head when i'm fishing docks because typically we have more current we have deeper water and i have to make sure my baits are near the bottom of the water column. So those are the seven rules to flounder fishing. I hope y'all found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Comment with any questions. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.